Kirby, you're on live, right? Yes, I'm here. Fabiana, are you on? Yeah. Michelle Scott, are you here? I'm here. Okay, we'll start. Uh, the first item on the agenda for today is the varsity baseball field. We have our athletic director, Steve, here to uh, do some explaining of that. Yeah, so um, I met with a requester from NBS. Um, some of the things that we saw that jump out from his and his opinion a little bit of a step up area for the complete. Um, he was interested in this. Just you know, look at how third base is always been existing. Um, and um, after meeting with the state, the varsity students put their up by asking the conversation and the conversation with Mr. Dave, but he Landscaping, right? So just put the grass and seed it. Some of the things that Mr. Church brought up. Just take off the 1928 and material to fill in some of that perhaps step up that we have behind. If I'm not mistaken, you said that you need to have a mix of this. Help out with some of the things that you have. Bringing, bringing up that. I'm not sure how you would like to address it for that reason this year. No, um, so we did get a person. So we're looking um, to have the Zondo family drainage, 16,500 figure of So you're looking somewhere near the 7,000 that we received in the that's total for the 17,000 dollars I have I have one question. Dangerous to students involved in this conversation. Is there anything on that step that's dangerous to our players or the business during practice? Can anybody get hurt with that step in practice? I think there was a concern with the step. Oh, one second. I apologize. Michael, I'm sorry, but they're saying that they can't hear. Um, Ms. Kirby, Ms. Fabiano, Ms. Scott, uh, can you hear me when I speak? I can hear you, Sherry. I couldn't hear anything Steve said, and Jerry was very choppy. Oh, same, as, same with me. It must be that we may not be working. I have a strange feeling. Because this one is right here in front of me. You're clear, Wait, Sherry. Got... You're coming very clear. That's because I'm so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Can, can you can you hear me now? Can you hear Mr. Barandika? Can you hear Steve? Yes. For now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Eyes are on you now. Yeah, eyes are on me. <laughs> um, should, I, should I repeat? Sure. Repeat what okay. you said. I apologize, so, but okay. we want to make sure everybody hears what you have to say. So I did meet uh, with uh, Mr. Mr. Church uh, from the MTBS uh, in regards to the baseball field. We took a walk around the fields, and he was concerned with the step off behind um, the home plate as well as a little bit of third base, as well as the gravel behind home base. Um, after the conversation that I had with uh, with Mr. Church, I also sat down with uh, Mr. Tate to, you know, to kind of see how we can approach this moving forward. 
Um, and Mr. Tate shared with me that we do have some, we do have contracted services for landscaping, which addresses the seeding and cutting the grass and, and things of that nature. Um, and that we would also be filling um, in more of the uh, other material that we have behind home plate, as well as in the infield, hopefully, um, you know, relieving some of those issues that we may have with, uh, with uneven surfaces. And then Mr. Tate, you wanna, I guess, go back in with what you said. So we received pricing to have the gravel area replaced with sod. Sod replacement, under drainage, and irrigation working in the neighborhood of $17,500. Did everybody hear that? Yes. yes. Excellent. Yes. Okay, and, my, and my question was, did we hear the word dangerous at all? Is this, is this inconsistency at home plate or on the field a danger to the students or visiting team, our students or the visiting team? So again, I think there there is a concern with the uneven surfaces in the sense of a step off. Now, again, I have not been here in the past, so you know, with with Mr. Tate's experience in the sense of you know us going in and filling in in that, I think I guess the, the idea there would be to to remove that a step off, correct? That would yes, be it's just natural erosion that occurs during the course of the season. It hasn't been played on since what, five six months ago, so the start of every season that gets refreshed as does the infield mix. Okay, so I. I... I didn't hear the word dangerous there. Is it is it dangerous to players at home plate or the catcher when he runs backwards to catch the ball? Is he uneven to the point where he could sprain an ankle or a player coming home uh, sliding into the plate? Can he get hurt from the gravel? Is there something that we need to worry about with that? Well, yeah. Pete, the, Pete, the the uneven I think is is in the infield going toward the outfield, if I'm not mistaken, and that's uneven. When the infield is when the gravel is lower than the grass line into the outfield, that could be dangerous. So that making sure that that's flush is important. Yes, the gravel behind the, the so there's gravel there's gravel going toward the the home dugout, the away dugout, and behind the backstop. Part of that gravel is used as a warning track to tell the catcher that he's getting close to hitting the the um, the fence. I'd be I'd caution to put uh, grass back there because if it's wet and slippery, that can cause the catcher to fall down. So I know the gravel was put there as basically on those three th th those three areas. It was it was more of a warning track kind of um, reasoning. Okay, and then and then you said the step off at home. That's the one I was mentioning. The step off at home plate is is the step off high enough where the catcher going for a foul ball, running backwards, can he hurt himself? Can he trip? I think the way that it is potentially yes, but if it's something that is that is evened out, then I don't think that would be a concern. Anymore. Okay, so if it's repaired, it's not a danger. Correct. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. Does that cost the seventeen thousand five hundred, considering the repair of the home play area, the in uneven yes. playing area, and the side where the gravel is? So it's all in. Oh. And your conversation with uh, Mr. Church was that was that indicated that he would like that to be replaced by? I, th I think ideally, again, yes, I think, I mean, ideally, the material that's there right now, the gravel isn't maybe what's being used now. I mean, I know that in conversation before with Mr. Take, he said that that is what was selected at the time, you know, when, when the field was was redone. Um, but again, I think that, you know, maybe not the same, maybe not that same type of material being used right now. It may not be the most ideal, um, but again, yeah, I mean, I think if we explored, you know, a sod, it, it would be maybe something that's a little bit more be a little bit better to use. Given that Ms. Kirby has spent almost half her life on baseball yes. field, she has. I would, I would, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little doubtful about should we be replacing the sod? Do we need more opinions? Well, I mean, because I, I appreciate that, and you know, if anybody took a ride over to MTBA, you know, to James Monroe Park, they don't have sod or anything behind the where the catchers catch. It's all dirt. Um, listen, I, I, I would love for us to have a turf field. I think that that would be phenomenal. I'd like us to have lights, but I know we also have to be responsible right to, to our budget, what we can afford. I know when we spoke about sod at a previous meeting, the concern was 
putting in irrigation to make sure that it, it doesn't it doesn't die. You know, sod has there's when you put down sod, you have to maintain it and you have to water it regularly and, and it's gonna have to be cut regularly and it's gonna have to be maintained. I, I'm not sure why we would put sod in that area behind the behind the backstop. Again, I, I think that I I don't know. I, I just I would say drive around to other baseball fields in, in the town and, and look, there's not there's not grass in, in the backstop. I mean, if we have, do we have concerns from parents? Do we have concerns from the athletic trainers? Were there injuries? I mean, those are things that I think we should look at for the last several yeah. years. I don't know of any. I know, like Gazala said, you know, my, my son played for several years on there with that there. I, I, I watched many baseball games there. I, I don't recall that particularly being something that anybody thought was dangerous. Um, you know, I... I uh, if you want to put some other type of material, I'm not 100% sod. What what is that? Seventeen thousand, including irrigation. Yes. Do we have an alternative? If I may, yeah. do we have an alternative cost if we went with the the dirt, like doing everything you're saying? Yeah, we're going to rid of the step and so forth, but not putting sod. Is there a big difference in cost? It would probably be in that same arena. The concern with putting the infield next back there, though, is ponding. We have an issue with drainage there at okay. the park as well, so that it could become so, an over wet area. So the sod problem. helps absorb the water. Yes. It would probably be better for the drainage that we have in the area. And price wise, we're not looking at an, an absorbent amount of difference, or a difference rather, I should say, absorbent difference. Okay. Do you, um, if I may ask the question, of course. Not, not wanting to put you on the spot, but do you have a recommendation at this point? Personally, do you think, given what you've seen, what you heard on this replacement of the gravel? I was never a very good baseball player, so. <laughs> <laughs> I was, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Mr. Reniger, do you have any recommendations for that? I mean, again, I think coming in and being my first year and kind of assessing the area, you know, for the first time. Um, again, I haven't heard of any specific injuries. I do understand the concerns coming from the parents. And I think that it, if a step off is there, I do agree that that is something that can be dangerous. But at the same time, if it's something that we're going to be able to repair mm -hmm. or be able to fix, um, then, you know, I understand that as well as 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 a remediating factor there you know, to try to make that try to amend the area. Um, but again, out of what I've gathered so far, I haven't at a for sure, like, yes, this caused an injury or, or, or that kind of thing. But I do see the concern with, with, with the, you know, with the material. Um, but again, I think if it's, if it's, if, if it's remediated in the sense of filled in so that there's no step off, um, I could see that as maybe like a first step, you know, in, in, in assessing the area and kind of seeing where we go from there. So your, your recommendation is to do the, the fill in for now and see what happens after that. Yeah. And would we be filling in and and putting better dirt? Because I know that has been a concern of the players um, and the parents for many many years. Is that the infield is riddled with rocks and pebbles, and the dirt has always caused concern when stu when the athletes are sliding, they're cutting up their knees because they're sliding in essence on rocks. And that to me is more of a bigger danger. Um, for our athletes to make sure that we have, you know, proper good grade dirt in the infield and make sure that that is continuously, that has to be maintained too. That has to be watered, that has to be raked before games. I mean, I don't know how the fields are prepared before games, but that has been an ongoing issue for many years that, you know, the fields are not being properly maintained between games. Okay, the dirt. Yeah, so the infield mix, um, we can provide samples for the parents and the coaches. They can select whatever product they want, which is how we've always done in the past. So mm. whatever they want, they can get. If if I may just add one more thing, in in addition to that, I know um, I think I briefly brought it up last time um, that the some of the parents um, for the for the baseball team um, have also discussed um, that they want to. Um, donate the uh, the bullpen uh, i know that um it's something that they've already gotten quotes for and i know I, I briefly mentioned it to mr tag as well um and they wanted to see if that's something that you know the board would be okay with um they do have uh, an insured 
um, individual who, who provided the insurance that they, and, and also a quote for them um, if the board's okay with uh, with them doing that. Well, I mean, I don't see a problem with donations as long as it's approved by our facilities director. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure you'll review their plan and see if it's. Yeah, Stephen and I already went through that. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. You have a problem with that, Casal? No problem. In fact, I'm very grateful Gerber, you have that. a problem with that? Yeah, absolutely not. I think that's fantastic that the parents want to donate that. It's Scrabiano. much much appreciated. Scrabiano, do you have an issue with that? I think that's wonderful if we can have something donated. Okay, Ms. Scott, you okay with that? Okay with that, I agree. I think it's wonderful. And I just ask a quick question because I my mind was going back to the dirt. So if we're going, so we're not going with sod, correct? Is that what you said? I want to make. What, what did I hear? Did I hear that we're going to go with just no. filling in the dirt and not doing sod? Did I mishear? We. I don't think we decided anything. Oh. We're just hearing the options. Only because I. My only concern, and I'm all for the best and saving the best money. My only concern is it seems to me that Mr. Tate was a little bit concerned with drainage. So dirt brings us mud. Grass brings us absorption. So that's my, and I'm not saying you need, and I knew nothing. Let me make that statement. Absolutely nothing about baseball fields <laughs> at all in any way, shape or form. However, I do understand the concept of absorption versus not. So my only concern, although you're saying, absolutely, we don't need to have sod. There's many baseball fields that don't have sod, but we're not worried about other people. We're worried about, if we talk about our baseball fields and the location of our fields, if we have a problem with drainage and the cost is comparable and we put in sod because it's including the irrigation, Perhaps we should think about the side. Yeah, and that's would, my only it, thought. It and I, I don't disagree. Uh, Ms. Scurvy, Ms. Scott, you know, uh, I don't know about your children, Ms. Fabiano. I know nothing. So I, and, I'm not talking anything about baseball. I'm talking about a field with absorbing of water. I know nothing I do about wanna, baseball. And I do want to clarify as well that obviously it would be softer than the gravel, which is already there. Okay. So you are answer so not answering. So I, so we definitely want the gravel gone, but my only concern is we go with the dirt, and I'm calling it dirt, I don't even know if that's what it's called. Dirt versus the sod. I don't want to have an issue with, with drainage. drainage. I think that if I may, Dr. Fund, there are two issues here. One is the the, the condition of the field where it's not Step going to mm -hmm. And then there's the outside by the wall of the gravel. Mm -hmm. We're not in agreement that we need to replace the gravel. Right. Oh, but, I see. Okay, so I missed it. Thank you. But the Thank field you. needs to be right. brought up to plain shape, and that's what we're using the dirt to even out, which I agree with. Dr. Chanley, that if we can replace this facade on the field, not do it by just bringing more dirt there, uh, the sod would reduce the injury that Mrs. Kirby was just mentioning okay. because the kids are sliding on dirt that has pebbles and not on sod. Right? So right? I, I, I think think we'll no, you right. would never be sliding on sod. <laughs> no, you don't slide on sod. Uh, no, the, that's that's stopping. Would never have that's not her. She doesn't know baseball. Slide only on the dirt. Slide only on the dirt. Well, Mrs. Diamond. Yes. That dirt will also be, that injury will still be there. So the right. quality. So of, that's why Mrs. Kirby yeah. asked about replacing the dirt because that's been the biggest complaint she's heard. But the that's uneven it. surfaces are not on the dirt. No. Where is, where is the uneven surface? They're, they're behind. The they're behind home plate. Yeah. That's what I was talking about. So I think we need. I think we need a no. comparable price to the sod. And to replace gravel, I would assume, well, and then wait, that's, what that, that's what that is. That's for. what that is. His 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 quote, price is that is for replacing the gravel with, with sod, with sod. And including, okay. including, with including sod. Irrigation. With irrigation with sod, and including the dirt that we need. What's about two different areas, correct? correct. Yeah. Okay, good. I thought it was me. Okay, mm -hmm. so you have a gravel area now. Yes, you can either just maintain it and top it off so it's flush, and do nothing else, and that gravel also helps with drainage. Correct. Or you could replace it with sod, which would also be beneficial to drainage. Correct. That's 17,500. You could replace it with infield mix or dirt. Right. That would be a drainage problem. And that's not your recommendation. So you, have, so you only have two choices. Either right. change it to sod or go back and just let replenish it. Replenish it. All right. Now, this original, this original topic came up because we did have a parent. Was it a parent that complained about the uneven surfaces with the gravel? Correct. Correct. And Russ who ran the rec baseball uh, for years, he came and said that he would want to see the gravel gone or he would want to see it topped off. What was he, his recommendation? He, he was concerned with that. He was concerned with the step off, but he, he did agree that that's probably not the best type of material to have behind home plate. But he, did he say sod was better? 
we discussed more, there, there's more other options. Okay. And I mean, SOD was one of the ones that came up, yeah. Okay. So I, I, I know Russ, I know he's been dedicated to baseball in this town for probably more than a decade. And I would, I would trust his opinion. Uh, Mr. scurvy has been on the baseball field for years as well. So sure what she says is very logical as well. So I think. Well, it, it, it's important to understand that it's in an area that is. It, it's the backstop where if the ball gets fouled back, the catcher will be getting up and running backwards. My only concern with sod is if it's damp or wet, you're going to have the catcher slide backwards because they're running, they're jumping up and they're, they're running back backwards, right? All in, in like three seconds, trying to catch the ball that pops up and the gravel gives them footing on the ground and gives them the warning that, Hey, I can't go too much further because I'm going to hit the gate. I just caution with sod because it can it can become slippery and that could be this isn't like the actual playing where people are running through and you know this is beyond it's beyond where the umpire stands right so you have the catcher the batter and then the ump and then it's behind that it's it, it's meant as a warning track it, it, it I, just, would, I would say ideally you have grass and then after the grass, before you hit the fence, you would have some form of warning track there before you hit the fence, ideally. Not maybe as much gravel as we have, but I, I do understand where, where Ms. Kirby is coming from. So there would still be a warning. You can, have a, you can have a small mm -hmm. lining right, 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 right at, right at, right at the end before you hit the fence to still warn them that they're going to hit the fence. Um, now, have, have we ever looked at a cost for infield turf? that would take away all of the problems with the gravel, the, the, the unevenness, the, the maintenance of the sand, the raking of the fields. I, I, I don't know what it costs just for the infield, but I mean, could, could we get a price for that? I, I'd be curious as to several, what that would be. Several hundred thousand dollars. Oh, okay. And what was the, the bullpen cost that we got into? Oh, that's about uh, $2,000. <laughs> I was like, maybe we could ask. Mr. did you hear what Jerry said? He said it's going to be several, several hundred thousand dollars for that. Could we get a quote? I'm just curious. I mean, it's something to think about. I don't see what, why getting a quote would hurt. Yeah, let's get a quote for that. Why not? I mean, we have the turf, you know, the, the cage turf. We have the football turf. Uh, maybe it makes sense to start looking at our other fields and because that that take, the turf takes away a lot of the maintenance cost and the upkeep of those. You, you're, you're saying just the infield get a quote for correct? Right. It, yeah, because you can have the outfield can still could still be you can have an infield turf and an outfield still be grass. Mr. Scurvy, would, it would need to be replaced every five years, five or six years, right? I no, like it's, not, it's not ran on as much as a football oh, field. Okay. Because I know we about have a time. Years. About 10 years, every 10 years. Well, I mean, if, I'm just saying if we're looking at different options, it might be something to, to look into and maybe yeah. something we could put into to the budget. Yeah, I don't, I don't see what Hamid would do. I don't know if that's what we'll, we'll do ultimately, but quote won't hurt. But I guess I guess we'll have to uh, discuss this a little further and see where we can where we can take this. Would we be okay with that moving forward with doing the bullpen in the meantime, or do you want? Yes, I, I I'm okay with that. I mean, the whole board obviously has to vote on it, but Correct. I don't. I, I think we could put that on the agenda yeah. to to approve that. As long as Jerry okay's the plans and. It's not going to impact what we decide to do with the field, right? The no. offense just has to go in the same place, yeah. right? And just why yeah. do we have that okay. somebody wants to do? Just so that I can let you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's absolutely incredible that parents are donating. donating that, yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, so we'll we'll get some more information on this, and I guess we'll talk about it next month one more time. Okay. Anybody else have any questions about that? All right, the next thing on the agenda is the lacrosse rebound wall. Uh, I, I was emailed by coach Garavanetti about a rebound wall. 
Uh, he's requested this wall so far. I've been on the board. This is my fourth year. He re requested this wall a few years before my son was playing. And as a board member, he sent me emails about this every year. It's very important to him and the rest of the coaches that teach lacrosse that a rebound wall is essential and his players learning how to, I guess, catch the wall from different, catch from the wall in different angles when they toss it. Um, I told him that we would discuss this. We discussed this when I was on the BG and and T for years and we've never uh, resolved it. I reached out, I took the opportunity to reach out to a local uh, contractor who said he might be willing to provide his services free of cost. Again, I did not make him any promises, um, but I told him that it would be discussed with the board and administration and see if anything could be done, uh, you know, as far as compensating his work, his free work. Again, I made no promises and I'm not gonna reveal the man's name until it's discussed with the board. Um, Jerry and Steve are here to talk about this. So I'll, I guess I'll let Steve go first and then Jerry could follow up after me. Steve. Sure, I mean, I, I think um, in my experience with lacrosse, you see the you see the boys and the girls all the time hitting up against walls, you know, wherever they can find space to, you know, to practice. It's almost like having a buddy, you know, you can kind of throw, throw the ball with. Um, and again, I, I can definitely see the um, the improvements that it can make for them, you know, individually and, and obviously as a team to be able to have that to practice. And even if, you know, if they're by themselves and they want to kind of just hit it against the wall, I think as long as we find a good place for it, um, where it's maybe not in the way where, you know, someone's going to get hit or anything like that, I don't see why it would be something that um, would be any concern to me. Jerry? So really it's up to the board to direct this. So uh, if it's something you want to pursue, I think it's going to be a lot more costly than you imagine. But I would look for Mr. Barandica to define what the size of the wall is going to be. Uh, it's a big factor, whether it's two-sided, you, know, you set it up somewhere where you can have players going on both sides, whether you have dividers in between, <clears throat> excuse me, whether or not there's a paved surface for rebounding off or play folks on the grass. Once those kind of things are defined, the board could then direct their civil engineer to put together a design proposal for that. And then we get an idea, but I think it's going to be much more expensive than you anticipate. Okay. We didn't, we didn't uh, in the past come up with any kind of plan for this, did we? No. Okay. Okay. And I, I also want to just uh, state that I was also told that this could be used for tennis players as well. Uh, okay. They don't have their player with them. They can rebound off the wall as well. Um, you see similar things like this in parks sometimes. Yeah, and a little handball is played on those courts and paddle ball, things like that. Um, does anybody have any questions? One of them. Yes. So what I'm imagining is something like the one in Thompson Park where the seniors practice pickleball, I believe. It's, so it's just like a wall practice for tennis. Right. So handball? It's like a handball court. That's what I know. Okay. So. To want us to take the set, we would first need to identify a place. I don't know if that has been discussed ever. Um, and that would need to be paved or whatever. So can we start by going and seeing what schools around us have something like that and what it costs them instead of having our own cost estimate done by an engineer? I believe if, it was, if we could just feed off of, get an idea of what our starting point is based off of any other schools around us. That would be a better yeah. starting point. So you had your monthly meetings, correct? Mm -hmm. So maybe at your next monthly meeting makes sense. Just yeah. put it I out there and say, if any of, if any ADs, of who has this, what's it called? Uh, uh, a rebound. 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 Who has a rebound rule? What does it look like? Can I come and check it out? What a question. So, and, and I'm curious. Um, I don't know, Mr. Brown, if you know about this right now, but does our lacrosse team have rebounders? I know I bought one from my family in Houston. Do they I, have that as an equipment right now for the kids? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen so, any. I haven't seen any. I'm sorry. I, I did have that conversation with Coach G. A rebounder is good when you throw the ball, it comes back to you. Yeah. A, a, a rebounder, I'm sorry. A rebound wall, when you throw the ball, it's going to hit at a different angle. Sometimes it's an unexpected angle. Mm -hmm. And that's where the skill comes in to adjust your stick in order to catch the ball at a different angle. If it's the corner, it comes back fast. If it's low on the wall, it comes back fast. If it goes up high, 
you got to catch it high. So it's it's more of an angle skill than a, a rebounder where it just throws it right back at you in the same spot. That's a difference. So we There's a huge difference, right? My son used to rebound off my garage door, That's which is always a great thing to do at home. Right yeah. That's a very exciting to rotate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so now my, my, my garage door is, you know, yeah. perforated, so it's, it's nice. Let's the air in. All right, so you'll, you'll do some leg work on that, get us some ideas, maybe some photos, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and a cost analysis. I know the cost of when they probably did it will be a lot cheaper than when we do it. Of course. But again, if we have a contract or a multiple contractors that want to help, um, that would be great. And then maybe we can cut down the cost somehow on that. Um, like I said, it's been asked for for years. We could we can do it for our children. Why not? Um, okay. So, does anybody have any questions about that? All right. The next item on the agenda is the annual landscape contract. We had discussed that last month that we only had one bid. Um, no, that was the snowplow. I'm sorry, snowplow. Okay. <laughs> so, why don't you take it? Sure. So, I provided members with the uh, handout in advance, which was the uh, big data from last year. This is a new contractor, Boss Landscaping. This was their first year of completing the contract. The bid last year was $140,000. They were the lone bidder. They were awarded the contract. Uh, recommendation now coming to the end of the contract is whether or not we renew with them for an annual 2% increase or if we put this out again for public bid. Um, I think they did a reasonably good job. It was the first time, it was a learning experience. I would recommend we renew with them, but whatever the decides. I think both of them, you just pay the 2% over the and and what harm would it be for us to put this out to bid? That it could come in higher. So if we renew with them, we pay two percent. If we don't renew with them, we put it out to bid. They could bid one sixty, hundred sixty thousand, and they might still be the lowest, and then or hundred eighty or whatever. Right? Okay. So it's a matter of you already are we you we're already your client, so we'll just keep it at two percent. Cost of labor or services, or yes, it fuel, hasn't gone fuel down. Is what's the increase. Oh, yeah. So, so I, I don't think this. Do you think the cost of labor will come lower in any So, your, your recommendation is to keep them on board? Yeah, yeah. I think it's worth it. Okay. Yes. Any, any questions, questions on that, guys? Girls, guys. <laughs> I'm good with that. Folks, folks. Folks. Okay. You like that? Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's that. Sounds good to me. All right, the fourth item on the agenda is the Oak Tree School Solar. Yeah, so I provided a uh, handout on that as well an overview of the solar performance through September of 2023. You may recall we opened the school in 2008 with that system. The construction cost was $523,500. At the time, I applied for a New Jersey Clean Energy Program grant and received that grant in the amount of $177,023. That left us with a total net cost of $346,477. So for the past 15 years, we have been generating stress, which are solar renewable energy credits. Um, you've probably seen my monthly report. It's a program I might manage. Uh, and we put them out to market, sell them. We have taken in $198,911 to date through stress payments. The approximate value of the energy saved is $125,773. We have an outstanding cost of $21,793. Okay. At the current rates, I anticipate within the next plus or minus two years that will be paid off. What we've just entered, though, is having just passed the 15th year of the program. Um, the value of the strikes have ranged from $30, which is what they currently are, up to $650. Mm -hmm. So early on in the program, uh, we were making a lot of money on this. It really fell off a cliff. It's been stabilized for the past several years. In the 200 range, around 220, 230. However, we hit this 15 year period. And we are now, uh, after 15 years, go cat uh, we are categorized as a New Jersey class one rec market for the remainder of our use of that. The price we can sell these for are a fraction of what they were. <laughs> so just prior to reaching the 15 years, I sold them for $230 per rec. Now that we are a New Jersey class one rec, 30 bucks is what we get for them. So it's falling off massively. Um, but it was a, it is a success story. When you look at the amount of money is owed for what we paid it's still, for, it's, it's still successful. And it will continue to generate. Um, eventually, it will have paid for itself. Right. So my my question to you is, why are all roofs solar? 
Uh, well, the other argument is that the yeah. return on investment for this is will be 18 years. Right. And return on investment usually look in that five to seven year range, which is um, your roof out there, you'll get 25 years on. So you got about another seven, eight years left on that roof where you'll be generating only about $3,000 a year. Mm -hmm. um, so when the roof comes off, the panels come off. I will tell you though, the panels have gotten much more efficient. So the square footage area that these panels take up, which is a 50.4 KW system, that same square footage area might be three times that. Yeah. Uh, wow. Whether or not you can use the inverter, you know, we'll find out these things in the years to come. But I wanted to let you know that because it's a massive change. And if anybody's monitoring, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, incoming resources, you're going to to see that fall off a cliff. Well, that's why I also ask why we don't have it on every because that'll be the question, too. Yeah, they, so it's too costly. It's not as right. right. Yeah. During this, no, time, there's no incentives like they used This to. was great. Yeah, they were giving out great grants early on. Yeah. And selling them for a lot of money, so it seemed like a really viable mm -hmm. thing. And now we don't want to save the environment. Uh, <laughs> they don't offer the grants that they yeah. used to for these things. The incentive is not there as it once was. No. Unfortunately not. If there were any more grants left on that. Oh, he would have done it already. Right. Yeah, we know that. That's good. The king of the grants? Well, thank you for that, Jerry. That's great. That, that yeah, it's great goal. news. Anybody have any questions for us to take? All right. Uh, the fifth item on the agenda is the traffic design at Monroe Township High School. This was discussed for years as well. And uh, hopefully we can get a final on it. Jerry? Uh, so, Mr. Prime Minister, I bring this back up uh, to refresh the memory. Maybe some people who weren't here. Um, this was reviewed by the committee uh, with Monroe Township Police Department, mm -hmm. I would say, five, six years ago, probably. Three years ago. Uh, it's regarding the turning lane as you mm -hmm. turn out onto Brineville Road from the side of the school there. Uh, you can't have a left turn coming into the property. And uh, Mr. Tufano has, uh, I guess, received complaints and concerns from parents and community members about that. At the time, it was reviewed with uh, the township and the police department. Wait, wait, on one second. Sure. Uh, I didn't get complaints that uh, they couldn't make a left there. I got a lot of complaints that a lot of people were making a left there. Oh, okay. And that students were almost getting rear-ended. So that was the complaint back then as okay. well. And then we came up with some kind of solution and never went to fruition. So that's what you can explain now, Joe. So I think it was... Um... Maybe also his name, Sir Jen, Jen, Sir Jen, 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 If I recall, it's a county road out there. Mm -hmm. The township engineer at the time they designed the high school uh, attempted to have turning lane in there, but um, by their evaluation, the county would not allow that because of a traffic condition it would cause at the light. And the option was that the board wanted to hire their own engineer to taking a, a stab at design, redesigning that entrance to provide additional turning lanes. Yeah. And and also we had discussed that that would alleviate a lot of traffic through the front of the high school with the buses as well. So, I mean, I personally know someone who, uh, a student who was rear-ended there. Um, and I, I think we should, in my opinion, I think that we should do all we can to alleviate that problem if it exists. Um, I don't know how much something like that would cost us. And I, I don't know if we did. We, we didn't do that either back in the day. Well, no, based on the input that we received from the police and the township, that did right. not seem like it was viable to pursue. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we can, if I may, we can spend the money to do the analysis, but in the end, the road belongs to the county. Okay, that, I think that's why so, so we, we can't just uh, we can't notify the county again of this existing problem and maybe somebody else is somebody new is in charge and they say, hey, wait a minute, maybe we can do something about this. Year. It's not the way it works. Can we notify the county that we feel that that is a dangerous situation and that could be resolved easily? Or perhaps we invite somebody from the county to come in and, and sit at a bg &T meeting and have the conversation with us about that. That would never happen, but. Can we notify them to this, to this possible danger? Mr. Bonner, how long ago was this conversation? It was about, it was, it was on my, it was during my first term. So it was between three and four, four years, years ago. So our high school population has steadily increased since then. So Correct. every year we increase by 200 kids, if I am not wrong. Correct. 100 to 100 to 200 kids. Probably. Right. And so just from that perspective, maybe we have re rehashed this conversation to say, yes. Correct. 
they I, well, I, I think it was about I think it was about two years ago because I was on BG and T at the time. So and I'm a, this is only my third year, and and I do remember the conversation, and I do remember somebody in that meeting. I'm not sure who saying that the the island out there um, was curved so much so that it would be dangerous for a car to make a left. When I left that night, I went over there, and it, it is not curved the way that it was described in the meeting. Um, so I think there's a few misconceptions over there about th that area, um, and and I think it would I, I think it would we should reach out to the county and see if we they would allow a, a left turn lane out of there and in, because what happens is you have all of the congestion in front of the high school, and you have everybody trying to get to one area instead of alleviating some of that. You have all of the students, the seniors that are coming up from Jamesburg, coming up Perineville Road toward the high school and having to make the left-hand turn at the, the traffic light. And then everybody's uh -huh. trying to get in, at, in one area. And we saw, unfortunately, there was an accident last week, unfortunately, you know, with two of our senior students and it's be, there is so much congestion at that light that we have to figure out some way to alleviate the traffic in the morning at, at that at that intersection. Perineville Road itself is not broad enough to add another lane. Sure, because you have the whole park there. <laughs> oh, the so you're saying coming to the park on the top from Jamesburg this direction. Okay. Yes. You know, that whole swampy, muddy area. Okay. Well, they Maybe park our cars I, for big I, meets or the big phone call events. To be about. Parents tend and end up parking their cars there when do, there's a soccer game or. Do we have a Mr. J? Do we have a contact that we ever contact? So we have an individual. You know, we have different people like that we deal with. You know, from the state or from the county. Do you have that in your end to the facilities? Is there any individual, or is it always the police department that makes that contact? No, I can reach out to the county engineer's office and. Forward the request from the board and see what they say. Oh, okay. So then maybe that's the we'll be done. We start out. I think like it's, you said, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Ms. Fabiano, how do you feel about that? I think that's a great idea. I know it was said that we've had several accidents so far this year. So I feel like that would definitely be a step in the right direction to start looking into, you know, if it's possible for us to try and alleviate this situation. Ms. Scott? I, I I agree with everyone. I think it's a great idea. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay, and then uh board member Gazala Bora had a couple of questions she'd like she to ask Mr. Tag, and he was more than willing to help her. So go ahead. Well, it was just um based off of um Mr. Tag's weekly report, there was some mention of um high school sewage issues. I don't believe I'm aware of what the issues are that you guys are working on. So I figured we could ask, we could discuss it here too. Sure. So the sewage system for the high school exits down towards uh, the board office. If you turn coming up school house road into the first lot there, you see fenced in two large containers there. Okay. That's the biopsy feed tank. There is um a six foot diameter, 30 foot deep manhole. It is a sewage pumping station. All the sewage from the high school goes into the station. It's treated with Biox feed system. It is then pumped out. We have been having a lot of operational problems with that uh, due to individuals flushing vape cartridges down the toilets. The vape cartridges are plastic mm -hmm. and aluminum components to it. And the pump system, as you can imagine, which sits at the bottom of this 30 foot tower, has pumps and gears in it, and they are getting jammed up mm -hmm. with these vape cartridges. Uh, there are two alternating pumps there. Uh, you've probably seen in my monthly report that's another thing that we manage. It's a complicated thing to manage. Um, we have deep NJDEP permits for it. We have an NJDEP licensed sewage operator. Uh, we do monthly inspections, and we have to file reports with the local Monroe Township Utilities Department for that. Um, and the pumps have been problematic because of these issues. Um, we just had a overhaul done on it to address this. And when we did, uh, in addition to vape cartridges, believe it or not, we're finding that individuals are flushing 
plastic bags, potato chip bags, and potato chip bags are getting caught in pump gears and the system and so on. Um, so we just did a overhaul there. It's not cheap when this happens because we have to first um, pump down that volume mm -hmm. of sewage waste, then pull the assembly out, have it mm -hmm. serviced, installed, which we just did. And it was clogged with vape cartridges and potato chip bags. Is it the first year, if I may, the first year that we've dealt with mm -mm. this issue on that scale, or it has been happening in the previous instances? The big question you know has gotten worse, I'd say, within the last two years. Two years. Yeah. I have a bags you've never heard. I didn't hear that's new, right? Yeah, that we yeah, were that I, I do have the primarily the head cartridges again, and then. Mm. Um, I have a suggestion for educating our students. Let them know what the problem is. I agree. Um, make, if, if somehow the facilities department next time they're doing that can make a video out of it and you know, you don't want to make, no, you don't want to <laughs> if not something <laughs> that, or make an educational video as to what the problem is, if this is happening, our kids are doing mm -hmm. it, they are not aware of the impact it has mm -hmm. on the high school building and the facility. Mm -hmm. Just the a man who sees you for the side on people. rules, not allowed, caught, so much fine. I'm, I don't even want to go the scare tactic way. I just want them to be informed. Well, I know what he's going to say. The flip side is that they may do it on purpose. purpose. Oh, you mean this can shut down school and I can get a day off school because that's right. what yeah. this is uh, the would, end of the pump. I would want to believe in the good in us, too. <laughs> I do think, if we, if I may, I, I know that we have to be very appropriate and and you're right. There's a and reply. cautious of when we go into the bathrooms. However, that being said, and I know I'm, I wasn't in the high school, but in the middle school, we can confirm to the best of our ability that children have no food. The problem is when they go in with bags. So if you go in with a, you know, your female or male, and you come with a purse, right? That could be an issue. So that's that. When do we? When do we have the ability to say, "Excuse me, you can't go into the bathroom with that." Yeah. It's a very tough, you know. So. You know, being very respectful and mindful that, you know, let's say the teachers are doing a fabulous job and administration is doing a fabulous job, they're not doing anything wrong. It's a very close call of what you can and cannot allow a child to take into a bathroom. So if they're going in with a with a, a, a backpack or they're going in and wearing a jacket, it's supposed to, right? They're wearing a jacket. They got the potato chips in the pocket. You you know, it, it's a very tough call of how we, and I do think that educating children, so when you educate your population, and we're going to say 95% of ones are full. 95% are going to be more conscientious that, oh my goodness, look what I could cause, and 5% may not. 5% might be, oh, I didn't know that. Is there no way to install in line with that a, a low point tank? What a low point tank is, is where the mm -hmm. waste flows in and anything heavy in that line? We would, have, there's a, there's a trash. The vape cartridges, though, are so small. They go past They it. float right past yeah, it. They, go the, they don't fall into that tank. There's a, there's a trash filter there. Gotcha. I'm surprised they haven't redesigned that to block the wave cars still. Like, yeah. And then what we should create that. Have we it's, gra it's, it's just through. gravity, yeah. It's just, it's, uh, yeah. And then you it, had a second part of your question, right? Yes, there was, and I'm not sure if there was any security concerns to discussing that. It was about a grant funded um, uh, project that you're working with the state police on for. Right. So the governor in August of 22 put forth a program um, referred to as CRG, which is for critical response mapping of schools. Mm -hmm. And in very simple terms, it is a digital mapping program for our facilities, sites that gets shared out to various OEM agencies, police, other levels. So if there is a response action needed at a school, every agency that is showing has the same view, the same playing card, so to speak, and can respond um, accordingly. That's not new. That's been mm -hmm. done that before. No, this is new in that that program. This program is also funded through the uh, Department of Homeland Security. So it was something that. Private companies had marketed the school districts prior to this. I remember some of them had contacted they probably were at school board conventions trying to sell that service. Right. And the governor stepped in and said, No, I see this as a necessity. And so the state has picked up the path to have everything mm -hmm. done this way. Excellent. But you've spoken about this before. Yeah, I remember. I remember this conversation. 
Yeah, so we're oh, okay. finalizing that now. I can remember yes. hearing this conversation at one of these yeah. meetings. Yeah. So we're working, we're giving our information to the state board to create their digital. Right. So we have, I, I didn't want to upload that stuff, but we mm -hmm. have Fortunate. Maps, no, it's not. Uh, in their format, in the CRG format. Mm -hmm. Uh, they've been shared with the principals for their input on things and they've made whatever edits they wanted to make to it. Uh, ran everything by the director of security so that he could have his eyes on it. And he said everything was good by him. So I'm literally just kind of dotting some eyes now and crossing T's and hopefully by the end of this week I'll have ours completed. Thank you, Mr. Tate. Okay. Ladies, you have any questions for Mr. Tate? I'm good. I don't have a question. I just want to I just want to confirm something. I just want to make sure that we understand. We don't have a sewage problem right now at the high school, correct? <laughs> yeah. correct. I just want—I just want to be clear because you yes. know we, we have okay, these discussions, so. and if, if we're not yeah, if we're not clear it about it, yeah. tomorrow no we'll sewage be... issues, but we have uh, a flushing problem. <laughs> no, we did not have a vape flushing problem at the school. That's what we have. Some maybe, children are maybe parents vape speak materials. to their kid about that. But the toilets do flush. People yeah. can utilize the restrooms yes. appropriately. Yeah. We do not have any waste back up in schools. Right. Number two is not an issue. We have a vape, there are vape sensors <laughs> in the bathrooms. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. yes. So when those alarms okay. go off, you know, people respond. What I've been told is that they learn through either TikTok or YouTube. That they vape, and I, you've probably seen a plume of right. comes up. They do it by a toilet, and these flush flush toilets are well. yeah. stuck to them. Therefore, the vape sensors are now. So, what is this? Real quickly, what is the penalty in school for being caught with a vape? Being caught with a vape, I, can, I don't have the code of conduct right in front of me. So, yeah, it's, spelled I it's, it's, conduct. It's, it's spelled out in the code of conduct, and. Um, I, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I guess you know that I'll be quoted right. saying the wrong thing. And I don't know, so I, I I do not have the code of conduct me, code of conduct memorized. Okay. But I'll be happy to provide that information at the next meeting. I will come with. Well, you. I would appreciate it if you emailed me. I'd be happy. To. Thank you very much. I'd be happy to. Okay, everybody, have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. The things we learn. That's what someone writes. Oh. <laughs>